We all know what a Viking is. A northern seafaring warrior who is constantly out pillaging and raiding other nations in the medieval world, right? Well, the Norse Vikings were much more than just valiant warriors. They were excellent traders and explorers as well, discovering the Faroe Islands, Iceland, Greenland, and modern-day New Finland called Vinland. Vinland is a place many people don't associate with European colonization. They mostly think of Christopher Columbus or Sir Francis Drake. But let's take a look on how the Vikings managed to sail such a long distance, 500 years before other explorers were able to. The Norse were a seafaring people, their culture was built on it, and most of their success came from one simple invention, the longboat. A design so ahead of time no other ship at the time were able to catch up to them, making it way more easier for Vikings to go out on their own and do successful raids, even if the odds were stacked against them. Their ships were able to reach up to 14 to 16 knots, which are roughly 16 to 17 miles per hour, so it was not uncommon for Vikings to be at sea for a long period of time without resupplying at a port due to their fast speed on the oceans. But back to the exploration. We begin in the 10th century. Both Iceland and the Faroes had been settled by the Norse. Though the Faroes were uninhabited at first, various sources tell that Irish monks used to inhabit Iceland way before the Norse came over and settled down on the island. And around 950, the man who is crucial to the story of Vinland is born. Eric the Red, named after the color of his hair. His father was banished from Norway due to manslaughter, and him and his family fled to Iceland, which was already settled by the Norse at this point, up until his father would die in 988. But his father's temper would live on in the form of his son, and Eric was banished for manslaughter because he killed the man who had killed his slaves. Eric was now out of options. He couldn't return to Norway because of his father's bad behavior there, and he was now also banished from Iceland in the next three years. He had to make a choice where he would go, and then he decided to go and explore further northwest. Almost a century before Eric's venture northwest, another Norse seafarer was blown off course and had accidentally discovered the tip of Greenland. There is almost a pattern here to the exploration, all of these seafarers discovering land on the result of bad luck. Eric had known of this voyage, and he was determined to find out what there really was to this mysterious glacial island, and so he set off in 980, and eventually settled down on the island, exploring the island and building settlements along the coastline, and remained there until his exile was lifted from Iceland. But Greenland, as you all know, is not green at all. The name stems from Eric, who had called it this mainly due to attract settlers, so you can kind of see this as the world's first clickbait scam. But it did work, and settlers flocked to the new lands of southern Greenland, and would be the first European settlements in North America, but the story doesn't end right here. Eric had finally settled down on the island, and had four children, a daughter, three sons, and the most notable of these sons was Leif Eriksson. As the Norse religion was being replaced with Catholicism in Scandinavia, Leif was traveling to Norway to convert to Catholicism, and he was hoping to preach the religion in Greenland. But on his way back to the island, in Great Norse tradition, he got blown off course and accidentally sighted land further west of Greenland. Around the year 1000, Leif and his crew were preparing to sail out and explore the newly sighted lands to the west. But they wanted Eric, Leif's father, a part of the journey. But he had recently been in a riding accident and he was too wounded to lead them, saying that if God wanted me to lead you, he wouldn't have dropped me off my horse. And so he stayed at Greenland. The crew first landed on the Baffin Islands, very similar to the structure of Greenland, a lot of glaciers and not much life at all. Then they landed in northern Labrador in modern day Canada, and then they finally landed in New Finland, or Vinland, directly translated to the land of wine or the land of wheat. Leif was determined to set up settlements here, and he went back to Greenland to inform his father Eric of the discoveries he had made, and the stage was set for the Norse colonization of Vinland.